What is up everybody? It is that one guy here coming to you all in a little bit of a different format today. There's a topic that's been weighing on me ever since I heard about it. So much so that I wrote a blog about it. Uh, I don't do that too often, but if you go to my website at thatoneguymoto.com, you can read some of my blogs. There aren't too many up there yet, but whenever I feel strongly about something, a lot of the times I'll write about it as opposed to making a video on it because I like to organize my thoughts a little bit better instead of just talking on the fly. And this is definitely one of those topics. So if you'd like, go to my website and check it out there. But for those of you who are less inclined to read something and instead watch something, then here it is. Now the title of this video may seem a little accusatory, but I am genuinely curious. I sincerely have so many questions regarding the production and release of the 2019 Harley-Davidson Livewire. Now first of all, some background. In June of 2014, Harley went around the world with Project Livewire. They toured with a fleet of electric concept motorcycles to gather information and feedback from Harley riders in an effort to see if there was enough interest in the bike as well as what people's expectations were regarding electric motorcycles. The campaign wasn't just on location as HD reached out to other masses online in an effort to crowdsource ideas to see what potential buyers wanted, liked, and or disliked. Concurrently, Harley was doing their best to market to a younger demographic. They used Marvel Cinematic Universe as a marketing machine, flashing the new Street Series motorcycles, including the Project Livewire bike, in Avengers movies, hoping to attract a new generation of riders. Now, this is where my questions start to accumulate. Now, I'll admit, I'll admit I am part of the problem. I'm a guy that has a short attention span. When I see something I like, I want it now. I know I'm not alone in this instant gratification generation. And that being said, I believe Harley Davidson has really missed the mark. Why generate so much hype for a motorcycle geared towards a younger generation and eager age group if you aren't going to deliver on that bike for a half of a decade? I don't buy, pun intended, the argument that younger riders can't afford a new Harley. Where there's a will, there's a way, and if a young person wants a new Harley Davidson, they will find a way to get one. So I believe the time to release the Livewire was simultaneously with the Street Series when you saw them both with Captain America and Black Widow weaving in and out of explosions in the Marvel movies. And really this is the least of my worries with the Livewire. Just days ago, Harley began the push to create some hype around the Livewire's release in August. Their webpage has a handful of pictures and blurbs about the bike, and ads have started to run claiming that the future is here with this new machine. Frankly, all of this has produced more questions than answers for me. Where's the spec page for this motorcycle? Why is everything so vague? Why is the future here now when I could have bought a production electric motorcycle 10 years ago? I get it, it's an ad campaign, but I don't think that it's too much to ask to have these questions answered. Especially when the asking price for this bike is starting at $29,799. Here's why. I just mentioned that electric bikes aren't new. They've been available for many years and the tech has really come around. Just take a look at Zero Motorcycles founded in 2006. They have been shipping their bikes in volume since 2010. So I have to control myself when I visit these live streams or forums discussing the live wire with writers saying things like, well everything costs more when the tech is new and prices will come down when it's not new. You know, it's a Harley so you're going to pay a premium. Now let's address these comments before I move on. First, like I've already mentioned, the tech is not new. Just because it's new to you or to Harley doesn't mean it's new. In fact, you can buy a Zero DS electric motorcycle with about the same mile range on a single charge for almost $19,000 less. Which leads me to the second comment. Since when is the HD premium worth an insane 63% price hike over the competition? Now just for a quick compare, the 2019 Bolt, a close competitor with Harley Sportster line, starts at $7,999, and a comparable 2019 HD Sportster starts at $8,999. Now that's a modest 11% markup for a Harley. Totally reasonable in my book. Even if you bought the most expensive Sportster starting at $11,999, you'd be looking at a lofty 45% increase over the Yamaha, which is closer to that absurd 63%. But that kills the Harley vs. Zero argument as the Zero will outperform the Harley every day. Even if you were comparing the Livewire's pricing to a top of the line Zero DS, which in mile range is almost 100 miles over the Livewire, you'd still be paying 45% more for the Harley. On top of that, Zeros have been in production for almost a decade, meaning they have been fine tuning their machines to perform better, to be more efficient, 
and it's also given them time to accumulate a vast amount of feedback from their customers. Another minor consumer-related beef I have is, has more to do with Harley-Davidson as a company and less explicitly with the Livewire. I would think that riders considering the Livewire have some concern for the environment. Harley does have a web page with a small section dedicated to their contribution to the environment and sustainability, be it only a few short paragraphs. But nowhere on the Livewire's page is there a mention of the environment, sustainability, or renewable energy. I would have at the very least expected a link to HD's sustainability and community responsibility page on the Livewire's page. Uh, it just seems like a lack of preparation or planning on HD's part to overlook something that is likely a priority to riders who will consider buying an electric motorcycle. Like I said, it's a minor beef, but an oversight that would be so easy to rectify. And finally, let's talk about HD Connect for the live wire. HD Connect is a service that will allow you to connect remotely through your smartphone using the latest version of the Harley Davidson app. Check bike vitals like battery charge status, see its location on a map, and get security alerts if it's been bumped, tampered with, or moved. This seems like pretty low tech stuff considering car apps can do things like start your car remotely, lock and unlock your doors, adjust the car's thermostat, and much more. And again, in comparison to the Zero Motorcycles app that can adjust the bike's torque delivery settings, set the bike's top speed, set riding modes, and get real-time performance data. The Zero app, as well as car apps I mentioned, are generally free to download and use. And there's the kicker. The HD Connect service will be free for a year, but only available for a fee after that first year. That's right, after the first year, your $30,000 motorcycle will require you to pay an extra fee to use the app's features. Now, if you want to compare that to Tesla's premium connectivity package, don't. The premium connectivity package by Tesla is a service that is an upgrade to what you already get standard when you buy a Tesla. All this goes without mentioning that I was already skeptical about Harley-Davidson being able to execute on an effective, bug-free tool. So to ask customers to pay for that tool boggles my mind. And frankly, the high premium you pay for the all-electric Tesla is where the comparison with these two electric vehicles should end. So if you can tell, this is a topic I'm passionate about, especially since I was a fan of the Liveware before all these non-specific specifications came out this week. The lack of transparency surrounding this bike makes me feel like they're trying to hide something, or at the very least, hype a bike that will inevitably underwhelm. I want to understand the timing. I mean, for me, it doesn't make sense to release a starting price if you don't have a specific numbers to back up said astronomical price. I also want to know why the sound of the live wire makes this being used as a selling point. Now in comparison to the rumbling exhaust on a Milwaukee 8 V-Twin, the live wire is going to be virtually silent. The silence was something I thought was pretty <laughs> unique and fun about the Zero when I test drove oh it, God. so why pump up the sound Woo! as a point of emphasis for the live wire? Now, like I said, I have so many more questions. And much that has been released about this bike has led me to more questions than answers. For now, I'm with a mass of online commenters who have been completely turned off by the price tag on the Livewire. August is not that far away, and hopefully HD will have those specs available sooner rather than later. And that will hopefully rationalize, even if just a little, why I should spend a road guide special kind of money on an electric motorcycle. All right, guys, that is all I have for you today. Again, if you want to read this blog, you can go to my website at thatoneguymoto.com. I appreciate you listening to this quote-unquote video, and if you're out there riding, be safe. And if you're not riding, get riding. I'm That One Guy, and I am out. <laughs>